Hi, I am Stephanie Hawkenhall, an author, a speaker, and an educator of Love Misunderstood Institute, a nonprofit organization. I educate about bullying and how love is misunderstood when you're bullying others. Bullying happens everywhere and has no age range. To help you through bullying and the trauma associated with it, I am a certified forgiveness coach. I am an apprentice facilitator in trauma healing. I speak and educate groups at schools, churches, events, and seminars. I look forward to sharing with your group. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the show. Where is the love? I am your host, Stephanie Hawken Hall, and I am happy to be here with my son, Gene Williams. Welcome, Hello. Gene. <laughs> we are here to share awareness about bullying and to enlighten you on this subject. We see how love has been misunderstood when people bully one another. So we'll be talking about bullying uh, versus love and having some conversations about it, okay? So let me start by telling you what bullying is. Bullying is any negative, unwanted, controlled, controlling behavior towards others. Right, Jean? Absolutely. It's a conversation that people tend to avoid. It's a very much needed conversation to help aid in the well-being of others. People have lost their lives behind bullying, and people have also taken their lives uh, due to bullying. Gene and I have both experienced bullying for much of our lives. We're able to see what bullying looks like and feels like through our experiences. So we're gonna be sharing our experiences with you. Right. I have met and spoken to many people um, and crowds that believe that they don't bully others or that they've never been bullied. We will be sharing information to help you see that we all bully others and that we are constantly being bullied by others. Right, Gene? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> bullying is not just physical. That's one of the things that people that I have found that people just don't understand. Um, that's what people, some people believe that it's only physical. It doesn't only happen to teenagers, newsflash. Um, it happens in all age ranges. It starts as young as toddlers. When toddlers are pushing each other, they're biting each other, um, and they're taking toys from one another, that's physical bullying. So that's why it starts as early as teenagers. Oh. Bullying happens. Go ahead. Toddlers, you mean? Toddlers. I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about doing this show. So bullying happens in our lives until the day we die. Um, it's either at the hands of someone else or either at our own hands. So on this show, we are going to be sharing information, including recent news about bullying and um we will be having conversations about what is in the news so that you are hearing current news stories being shared about bullying. So you want to add anything, Gene? Oh, no, I'm, I'm just listening. But okay. I, mean, I, I would say, though, that it, it would show you um, in everyday life that there are instances that we see every day that we don't necessarily... Um, take a, a cognitive approach to the fact that we are being bullied or we're seeing bullying in, in a, on a worldwide uh, platform. Right, exactly, exactly. And so that's why we're happy to be doing this show and sharing information with you so that we're making you uh, aware of bullying and so mm -hmm. that you can see it and, and understand that that's exactly what it is. So I wanna start out by sharing a, a recent story of a bullying incident that ended up in suicide. According to the Elk, Elk Heart Truth News in Indiana, a 12-year-old girl named Rio being bullied at school, according to her, after being bullied at school, according to her mother, 
Rio had alopecia and autoimmune disease that causes your hair to fall out. Rio was a seventh grader in middle school. She committed suicide. After Rio's death, hundreds of students and their families gathered outside of the school to protest, and some of the students walked out of class. Some people held up signs that said, stop the bullying. Say, see something, say something. The rally lasted about 45 minutes. Rio's grandfather said, no student should enter a school building in fear. Bring back memories, Gene. Oh yeah, absolutely. Rio's family said they reached out to the school on multiple occasions to talk about how Rio was being mistreated. They said the issues weren't addressed. Many classmates concurred with the sentiments. One seventh grader spoke up and said, this could have been prevented so many times, but it wasn't. And this is unforgivable. The school system failed Rio and they failed us. One lady said, I know many people who have reported bullying of their kids and nothing is ever done. This has got to change. The school superintendent said the district is completing an internal interview and cooperating with the law enforcement as they complete their investigation. A nonprofit organization is being created to continue Rio's legacy, which will be called Rio's Rainbow. So that's the story. <clears throat> that's the recent story of how a child committed suicide based on her what her mom said she was being bullied. So Jean um, has some questions. Um, and so we'll be bringing more awareness. So now we're going to have a conversation about this story. So if you have questions, please put them in the comments box so we can address them. So Jean, go ahead. Well, actually, I would like to start by saying I've experienced something a lot like this. Um, I had a friend who was in the sixth grade with me. Um, she was going through a lot of bullying in school and a lot of turmoil at home. And uh, after a while, she just kind of got tired and, and she committed suicide. Um, and she was only 11 years old. So, again, this, it starts early. There are no limits. Um, everyone... It, it, some people have it really hard, and especially when you don't have a, a home environment that's peaceful and supportive, then it's easy to to fall into the pit of despair. Right. Um, yeah, which would which would cause a person to do something like that in their life because they feel like they have no out. Right. Um, so, all right. In light of that, um, first question I have is. Uh, what policy should be put into place to prevent incidents like what transpired with Rio Alred? So if you have uh, questions, again, put them in the box. So to answer that question, children should be encouraged to speak up, first of all. Uh, they should be able, they should be assured that they can talk to any adult about the issue and that they can trust the adult to take care of the issue. Um, they um, should be able to talk to anyone in the school system if they're at school to get help. Um, so it, it's a, a great idea. What a great, a, a great idea would be to create policies and strategies that everyone is required to uh, stick to with consequences. So an example would be to create a no tolerance of bullying policy. So for example, uh, giving three uh, consequences. So the first one should be verbal uh, discussion. We're, we're gonna have a verbal discussion about this. We're gonna remind you about this no tolerance uh, bullying law um, because uh, that should have been in the beginning if that would have been. So you, you educate about the no tolerance of, of bullying. And then so the first offense you are going to give a verbal reminder. And so the second time should be perhaps a write-up uh, and an in-school suspension. They have in-school suspensions. So maybe giving them an in-school suspension, uh, which would uh, reveal, we've discussed this verbally already. Now you get one more chance. 
So then the third time should be an immediate suspension for a certain amount of days. So this will help children understand the seriousness of these policies and that we are, it's no tolerance. So you don't right. keep getting chances. Right. So that that's the answer to that. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so my next question kind of goes along in the same lines, but it's uh, it's a little more, I guess I would say a little more in depth. Uh, so what culture can be created in the school system to encourage other students to speak up in cases of bullying? So children first, they need to understand what bullying is. So education about bullying is very important. It's a necessity. Uh, this education should, it should be a required curriculum in schools uh, for all students and staff to make sure that they understand what bullying is. Um, a curriculum should be taught to everyone. It should be a requirement to provide education to all organizations, not just schools, but the workplace, in the workplace and in churches and in relationships where you're uh, helping people with relationships. Uh, there should be a required curriculum. So everybody is made aware of bullying and what, what it entails. Right. So in essence, what you're saying is like we're, we're uh, creating a framework to give people tools to, yes. to address bullying and recognize it in, in everyday life. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, so the next question. Was, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> it doesn't just affect schools. It affects all of those other places. So yes, the framework of, you know, putting that uh, in, you know, all of those organizations would help everybody to understand. And so, you know, like they used to have, I don't even know if they still say this, but no child left behind uh, right. rule. So it would be like that no person left behind when it comes to bullying. Everybody has that knowledge and that the opportunity to gain that knowledge through every uh, place that they go. So school, church, workplace, and right. then to even help with relationships. Yeah. That's another conversation in itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a okay. whole other conversation right there. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm sorry. What did I just say? Okay. Uh, so are there any policies in school set in place to reprimand and make examples of students that participate in bullying? So, yes, there are state and local lawmakers that have taken action to prevent bullying to protect children. A lot of people don't know that uh, and aren't aware of that. Um, each jurisdiction, including all 50 states, uh, address bullying differently. So because they address different bullying, uh, address bullying differently, uh, most state laws and policies, regulations require districts and schools to implement a bullying policy and procedures to investigate and respond to bullying when it occurs. So a handful of states also require bullying prevention programs, which is great. Right. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, inclusion of bullying prevention and health and education standards and or teacher professional development. So these state laws generally do not pres prescribe specific consequences for kids who engage in bullying behavior. Um, and very few classify bullying as a criminal offense. So um, I wanna okay. add to that. So you can find that information on stopbullying.gov. That's where the laws and the policies and the regulations are so that you can you know, click on your state and you can learn the individual policies uh, for your particular state. Awesome. You said you wanted to add something to that? Um, yeah, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> my mind is going faster than my mind can speak. <laughs> my <saying>. mouth can speak. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, I think this is really important, not only in, in this particular case of bullying, but just across um, our society as a people. 
Um, so the question is, what do you think can be done to foster compassion and acceptance in situations like this? So when you notice someone treating others negatively, you can help them by speaking up for them. You can help them by constantly reminding them to consider and think about how would you feel if someone was treating you uh, the way you're treating them? Sometimes this can help a person reconsider their treatment of others. So in essence, you're like, you're being a mirror for them. Yes, yes. So uh, that's how you could foster uh, compassion and acceptance um, by constantly reminding somebody, you know, maybe what you're doing is not good. So think about it. If it was happening to you, how would you feel? Or how would that make you think? Right. I love that. Um, and I mean, I also think just to add on to that would be just the fact that we need to learn to accept people for who they are. Um, yes. You know, no, no, we're all unique um, versions or or manifestations of the creator, however you see that. Yeah. Um, and in order to truly honor God, universe, however you go about saying it, in order to it, it truly honor yourself, you have to honor the, the God or whatever in everyone else. And, and I think that's a, a huge thing that's forgotten uh, in our interactions with our fellow man. Yeah, um, acceptance is very important because acceptance is showing that you're accepting them without judgment. So that's how you are. That's how you see things. That's how you view things. But I see it differently, but I'm not going to judge you and put you down and belittle you because it's not the same way that you think or the same way that you believe. So, <clears throat> and <clears throat> to that, I want to add that that is social bullying, you know, when you uh, put people outside of, you know, you put everybody in a box, everybody's supposed to think like me and do like I do. And when they don't, then, you know, I'm being mean to them and treating them in a negative way. That's social bullying. So to that, I want to add, there are many different types of bullying. Uh, and if you are interested in getting a list of the different types of bullying, you can email me um, and at uh, reallovemisunderstood at gmail.com. <laughs> so I had to think about it. <laughs> okay, so for me, here are a few tips uh, to help us not bully others. So this goes along with this story. So Learn not to go, what I just said, learn not to judge, uh, make, uh, make, make sure you're not judging others. Make that a habit of not judging others. And you never know what's going on in the person's life. You never know. So always be kind to others. Always learn to treat others the way you want to be treated and become an advocate of mistreatment uh, and the bullying of others. You wanna add anything? Yeah, I was gonna say, kind of going back to what I, we were talking about before about acceptance. Um, the awesome thing about recognizing and accepting that people are different is that when you get a different perspective, um, there, you create room for yourself to personally grow. And, and that's the huge thing. We're all supposed to be here constantly growing, becoming our, uh, a better version of ourselves every day. So yes. being around people who are not like you gives you the opportunity to examine your perspective and, and see things from a different lens. And, yes. and through that, again, it, it, you create the, um, the, the impetus for growth especially if, if you're truly cognizant of, of the beauty of people having a unique expression. Right. That's yeah. good. That's good. So I also want to encourage you, if you are experiencing being bullied, to talk to someone that you can trust, a friend, a family member, someone that you can trust. If you feel 
that you can't trust anyone, there are resources for you. So there is a suicide hotline that you can call and talk to someone that you don't know to get the help and the courage you may need so that suicide is no longer an option. Um, Jean, I'll have you read that in just a minute. Um, okay. so, um, so, so, so that suicide is no longer an option in your mind. You're, you're getting that help by calling the suicide hotline. Again, that's only if, if there's, you can't trust anyone or you feel like you can't trust anyone else. So if you don't feel strong enough, please do not try to face those fears on your own. There are, there is help for you so that you're not taking your life. Um, that's not the only answer. And don't let that be the last option. So the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, the Suicide National Prevention Lifeline phone number is 1-800-273-8255. And the website is suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Mark, do you have that? Can you put that on the screen, please? So I want to ask you, can you imagine the thoughts and the torment and the fear that Rio may have experienced before taking her life? I can't imagine that. But it had to be tough for her to go ahead and take her life. Yeah. So go ahead. I was going to say, just unfortunately, I, I feel like we all um, have those dark times, you know, not only just bullying, but life in general, where, you know, you kind of feel like the best in those times, the best option is just to exit things left. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> and truth is, even situations that are difficult and painful are the foundation of um, you elevating to another level, you becoming a better version of yourself. If you allow that, if you, if you dwell on the negative aspects of it, then you will forever be in the chasm of despair. But if, if, you, if you consciously step back and look at things from a different perspective, they can be the impetus for growth. Yeah. So like you said, never suicide, suicide should never be an option, even though I know that we all struggle with those dark feelings. Yeah. Um, the best thing to do would be to find a way to transmute that um, those feelings of despair into something positive and creative. <clears throat> For instance, exercise is great. Um, artwork of some sort, you know, meditation. There are a lot of different ways you can find something creative um, and take that that energy and, you know, put it, bring it forth in a way that's going to be conducive to something positive as, a, as opposed to something that will be detrimental for you. Yeah. Thank you, Flannery. I, exactly. Thank <laughs> you, Flannery. <laughs> That's an awesome comment. Hey, Mark, would you put up her um, other comment, Flannery Ellis? Oh, would you like me to? I can I can find it for can you. Can you see chat. it? Thank you for speaking to you. Go ahead, Jean. All right. Oh, it's not there. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hold on. Can you see it? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I found it now. Uh, so the first comment that she made, she said, I so agree with this. Uh, everyone being made aware, having a support network, and knowing of actual resources, people, organizations that are available. Diffusing the immense amount of fear, hopelessness, any, all of the, the just, sorry, the truly awful, life-altering, mentally abusive, perhaps, and all bullying that causes one to ever feel lesser than. Knowing you can speak out knowing those who bully will have to engage in having to, to speak to bullying and possibly another human being enduring life-altering, life-ending shame. 
<clears throat> so I want to add to that. Um, bullying can be very shameful. It can make you feel ashamed. Um, so ashamed that you're not telling anybody uh, what um, you're feeling. And so it's important to, to share with people, like I said, what, you, what you're feeling. Um, so to get past that shame, <clears throat> I'll be sharing with you in just a minute some of the, some of the other things uh, to do. Um, but you have to encourage yourself. You have to um, build yourself up so that you're able to speak. Because if you don't speak about what's happening, people will continue to bully you. Um, so you have to open your mouth and verbally speak to them. Um, it's so much going on here. <laughs> yeah. Gene, can you catch any of it? I'm excited about this. Thank y'all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to say real quick, what you just said, though, about speaking out. Zora Neale Hurston had this, this famous saying, um, and, you know, she's speaking about something different, but it, it applies to this situation as well. She said, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember it exactly, but she said, in essence, um, if you don't speak up against the bullying, the torment, the, the tyranny, if you don't speak up about it, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's something along the lines of when you, I know someone in the, in the chat remembers it better than I do, but if you don't speak up about it, then it, you'll die. When you die, they'll say you loved it or something along those lines. I had it in there. <laughs> 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 well, this hopefully, blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you'll remember before the show ends and then you can share it. Right, okay. So um, at this point, um, so after you realize that you have been bullied or um, that you have bullied some, that you have been bullied or, yeah, find your voice, Sharon. Thank you for being on the show. Right. Um, so, and thank you for all of you that are on the show. Thank you for watching and for being a part of the show. This is our first show of many. So you, uh, you may start experiencing some trauma from the event after you've been bullied. So there are different ways that are helpful to bring your mind to a peaceful place. So Gene is going to share how he relaxes his mind and comes to a calm place and a peaceful place in his mind to deal with the bullying situations. And then after that, I'll share uh, some ways that I've dealt with and still deal with bullying today. So go ahead, Gene. Right. So uh, as you see, the name there is Premier Fitness. Um, so aside from doing things like this, talking to people, helping people, one of my main uh, modes of only helping helping myself and others as well is I'm a yoga instructor, certified yoga instructor. Um, also a personal trainer, <laughs> certified nutrition, <laughs> nutritional <laughs> counselor. Um, I personally, when I'm going through things, um, I take time away. I step away from people. I, I go out into nature. Um, I roll out my yoga mat and I'll spend an hour, two hours, sometimes more. Um, practicing asana or, you know, physical, the physical aspect of, of yoga. I also meditate. I do visualization. I write out affirmations. Um, also art. You know, I, I sing and do a few other things as it pertains to creative energy. Um, I, t I take the lessons, you know, the things I'm going through in my life. And I, I, I take the energy and I, and I put it into something creative, like I said before. Uh, song, poem, you know, just something that will take the charge and the, yeah, the emotional charge from the situation and, and basically give it back to me as something positive so yeah. that I don't take the the out of, you know, committing suicide or doing something harmful to myself. That's great. That's great. So hopefully what he just said will will help you uh, give you some tips on ways out. So Mark, would you show uh, the three minute, um, it's not quite three minutes, but the yoga moment. So Gene is going to show you uh, some of his uh, yoga. Greetings and welcome to Premier Fitness. I'm Gene Williams, your yoga instructor for the day. 
and I'm here to tell you about the benefits of yoga. The mental benefits, yoga's incorporation of meditation and breathing can help improve a person's mental well-being. Regular yoga practice creates mental clarity and calmness, increases body awareness, relieves chronic stress patterns, relaxes the mind, centers the attention, and sharpens concentration. The physical benefits are the relaxation techniques incorporated in yoga can lessen chronic pain, arthritis, headaches, and carpal tunnel syndrome. Yoga can also lower blood pressure and reduce insomnia. Other physical benefits are increased flexibility, increased muscle strength and tone, improved respiration, energy, and vitality, maintaining a balanced metabolism, weight reduction, cardiovascular and circulatory health, improved athletic performance, and protection from injury. All these and more come from a regular yoga practice. Come join me, Gene Williams of Premier Fitness, to establish or recreate a personal yoga practice. So that is how Gene relaxes and calms his mind. And he explained that to you before the video and throughout the video. So I have my own uh, peaceful, uh, my own way of coming to a peaceful place in my mind uh, and creating a calm uh, state of mind. So I enjoy reading inspirational books and music uh, when things are chaotic. Um, <laughs> I uh, read inspiring quotes and affirmations to bring me back to a calm place. I read the Bible. I study the Bible and lots and lots of prayer. <laughs> and that's how I survive bullying experiences in any chaotic, uh, traumatic experience. So, um, I am going to share some of the reason why uh, up some of my bullying experience, and then Gene is going to share uh, some of his. Most of my uh, bullying experiences came from the workplace. So I started uh, educating about bullying because I experienced three bad uh, jobs in a row. And so I got fired from one after five years. Getting fired was not something that I had, that had happened to me in the past. Um, and then another, uh, the next bullying experience, uh, the next, uh, yeah, bullying workplace experience that I had was I worked for um, a friend and I started the company uh, with the thought and with the, I was told that I was, they were creating a position for me. Uh, so I had to be in a position temporarily until that position was created. So that didn't happen. Uh, so after um, 
some months I quit that because I saw that wasn't going to happen. And then I started working for another friend um, who had been my best friend um, in the past. And so I started working for her uh, and her husband working for that company. And when I did that, um, I had a co-worker who came uh, to the job and I had to train her for a position that I was training for. Uh, so I was training for a supervisory position and it ended up that she came and she came hired in one position. And when she came hired in that one position, she um, ended up asking, can I have that position? And they gave it to her. And because I was the one that knew about the position, they told me to train her. So that was a horrible experience. Uh, and there are so many details about that. Uh, by the way, I have written a book, Trouble on the Inside, What's Really Going On? Um, and I wrote that book with some of my workplace experiences in it um, so that people can see that uh, I talk about the different types of bullying. I talk about different strategies to help you get through bullying in the workplace. It is a real thing. It really happens. So I talk about those things uh, in the book. Um, and you can uh, reach me at real love misunderstood at gmail.com. I keep forgetting my own email. <laughs> But you can reach me there and ask me about the book and I can uh, get a book to you. We can talk about that. So, um, but that book, uh, I wrote that book out of that, her, out of those hurt places. So what happened is there was a young boy uh, who was in the news at that time and he, his mom was videoing him and he was crying and he was saying, I don't understand why people have to treat you so mean just because you're different. And he was just crying out. And so he was in the news. He was in the newspaper. He was all on social media. And so I saw it. And then so uh, a week after I saw the first video is when I lost that third job. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? I Losing jobs is not something. So I got fired from that third job. I didn't say that. So I'm like, I don't get fired from jobs. What the heck is going on? So then I saw that video again. And when I saw that video again, then um, the Lord just told me, that's your experience. And bullying is your experience. You've been bullied in the workplace and relationships in church. Um, and um, I haven't, wasn't bullied in school, but Jean was. So um, those are the places that you have to now learn about bullying so that you can educate other people uh, because these people are hurting. And then so after that Love Misunderstood Institute, the nonprofit organization was uh, founded and created. Um, so um, yes, sharing black women experience and experience more bullying than other races. Um, why that is, I don't know. I mean, we can get education and we can do different things too, just like others. So um, that's why I started speaking about bullying uh, and then helping Gene through his experience when he was a kid. So now Gene, share your story uh, with them about your school bullying experiences. Okay, okay. Well, unfortunately uh, I was, I'm cognizant of the fact that I began being bullied in the fourth grade by older students, also teachers, um, all through, you know, all the way up to, you know, adult relationships. I'm going back to school. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, all the way up to the point where in the 11th grade, I was almost expelled for fighting to defend myself. Um, and I had a, a major incident with one one teacher in particular, where she just she she talked uh, really demeaning to me a lot in front of everybody. You know, I mean, she made a habit of it. And uh, I've always been a peaceful person. I'm I'm like you know water. I start you know I boil and all of a sudden you know I'm just boiling over. So eventually, um, 
it got to the point where I was just so upset with everything that was transpiring that year that I just I went off on her. I, I, I cussed her out uh, in front of everybody. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't advise that, kids, if you're listening. <laughs> And I didn't I know about that until, I was fed up. <laughs> I didn't know about that until he was grown. But anyway, I, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I just learned about it yesterday. <laughs> Go ahead. But anytime that she would she would come to me in a negative way, I would do the same. I I, I became very firm. So I'm not suggesting that you cuss people out. What I am, however, suggesting is that you speak up for yourself. And for others who are going through something similar. Um, at yeah. the time, I really didn't have anyone other than my mom, you know, uh, speaking up for me. Uh, so I had to, you know, when I was in that position, I had to defend myself. And and everyone gets fed up. You know, that that's why, you know, kids, I, I hate to have to say it like this, but, you know, kids, you know, go and shoot up schools and things like that. You know, they, they get fed up and they don't have a positive outlet. To, to deal with those emotions so they do something, you know, um, life-altering. Um, so, you know, yeah, so, and then, like I said, on, on to adult relationships, that's a whole nother story. We'll talk about that at a later date. But, uh, yeah, that, that was my experience with, with bullying throughout school. Um, even so much so that at, in, at the 11th grade, I had to go to another school uh, and that was bullying there, but that's, <laughs> you know, and so the, when you, when you brought up the the piece about the young man that you saw the video of, he was crying and, and his mom was asking, you know, um, why do they treat you so mean? Because you're different. Mm -hmm. I've always experienced that. I've yeah. always been the black sheep. I've yeah. always been the weird one. So, yeah. you know, because of that, um, I've been bullied since I can remember. Um, and people feel what they don't understand, hate what they can't conquer. I guess yeah. that's just the theory of man. <laughs> <laughs> I give, that nod. give that to Nas, that's Nas. <laughs> but no, that, 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 that statement stands very true. Um, that's, that's why the acceptance part to me is a huge thing. You know, you accept people for who they are. You know, we're not all supposed to be you know, cookie cutter versions of the other. You know, we are all unique expressions of the creator. And yeah. in order to honor the beauty of your uniqueness, you have to honor the beauty of the uniqueness of everyone else as well. And that's true love, accepting yeah. people for who they are. So we- uh, Agreed, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, know that love is kind. Um, I was Patient. reminded, say that again. Patient. Yes. Um, love treats others the way they want to be treated. Um, love doesn't hurt, you know, like <laughs> Gene and I had this conversation last night. I was reminding him of when um, his stepdad, um, asked him when he was in his, he was in junior high school and he asked him, he said, Gene, Gene said he was in love. And he said, <laughs> he asked Gene, he said, Gene, does it hurt? And Gene said, no. And he said, well, it ain't, you ain't in love. <laughs> <laughs> so we laughed about that, you know, just talking about that and re being reminded of that. But, um, Love does not hurt. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is gentle. Love is not rude, you know, um, and not boastful. Um, bullying sometimes finds suicide to weak people. Um, yeah, weak people are the ones that uh, commit suicide. And that's, you know, why I was saying earlier uh, in the show that you have to find the strength to encourage yourself. You have to find ways to encourage yourself because when you encourage yourself, that gives you the strength to be able to speak out and to speak up and say what you want um, done or what you expect. Um, you know, you can't just talk to me any kind of way. You can't just treat me any kind of way. You have to speak 
uh, to that person and let them know that. Um, setting go ahead. firm boundaries. Say that again. I said setting firm boundaries. Yes, that's very important. And when you start setting boundaries, those people that have been bullying you, you going to them, you're going to be the crazy person. Right. <laughs> oh, they're crazy. Well, why am I crazy now? I, you know, you was the one treating me bad. You brought this out of me. <laughs> you treated the monster. Okay. Now you got to deal with it. Right. <laughs> so, hey, Mark, will you pull up uh, some of those comments so we can address them, please? So, go ahead, Gene. No, I was just asking if you want me to pull them up. Yeah, if you can. All righty. So, all right. So, going back to Flannery's, uh, her her comment says, "Thank you for speaking to this. Compassion, retraining, and resocializing every person, and especially those suffering from bullying to any degree." but also the bullies as they somehow become capable of inhumane human behavior. Uh, all to do just as you are saying, do not judge others. You never know what others are going through. Absolute facts. Yeah. Kindness always. Advocating for those who are being mistreated on any level. Embracing difference and growing from learning about all that you don't know that you didn't. So awesome. I love that. Yeah, you want to comment on it? I just I, I absolutely agree to everything she said. I yeah. Absolutely agree. So uh it's easy for us to speak to compassion because it's been a desire of, of ours for you know to have people being compassionate towards us and not bullying us. Um so uh Mark, you can put that comment back up. I'm I apologize. I honor that feeling weak can lead one to feel no other option than to want to consider suicide. But I do not think people who have gone down that path are weak. They are love too. They are deserving of love, not being judged, still being supported. They are very much uh, in need of love. Um, and that's why it's important to be able to listen to people so uh and not judge them we have to listen to people and hear what they're going through um and if you don't listen to people thanks for putting the uh, suicide hotline up there information again uh it's very important to be able to listen to people and, and listen to them without judgment because when you listen to people and you're judging them then they pull back from talking to you they don't want to share anything with you and that person you may be the last person that person hears from you know, the, the last person that they will hear from. So everybody that you speak to, you're not going to hear them. You can hear the same thing 10 times and then one person and, and not, it means nothing, but then one person come after that and say the exact same thing and you heard it. So we never know who we're assigned to. We never know, we never know whose voice, who is going to hear our voice and follow our counsel. So we, it's, it's very important not to judge people, but to listen and to help them as much as we can. And speaking up for people, we have to do that because everybody don't have a voice. We didn't have a voice for many years. So you have to be able to speak up for that person that you see are being bullied. There's a thing called secondary bullying, which is if I'm bullying, for example, if I'm bullying Jean and then somebody else sees me bullying Jean and they're afraid of me, they stand by. And when they see me come around, then they start bullying Jean just so that I won't bully them. That's a secondary bully. There are also uh, self bullies. Jean, talk about that uh, self bullying. Yeah, so self bullying would be considered or classified as constantly speaking negatively about yourself 
uh, constant self effacing comments or actions that keep you in the state of feeling unworthy of love, attention, um, respect. Um, so yeah, and we do that by the constant um, records that we play in our minds over and over again, telling us that we're not, you don't deserve love. See, that's why people treat you like that, because you don't deserve this. You don't deserve that. So, you know, yeah. And, 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 and so if we're talking about like law of attraction, the more that you, the more that you play that tape in your head, then you attract situations or you, you magnetize yourself creating more situations like that. So we have to reprogram that that repeating loop of of, of of consciousness, I guess you would say, that that we've been programmed with. Uh change the words that you speak to yourself. Um constantly feed yourself love. That's why affirmations are a beautiful thing. You know, the more you get that into your psyche, your subconscious mind, then in times of distress, your yeah. subconscious mind kicks that back up into your conscious mind and it helps you reprogram and refocus that energy. So, yeah. Yeah. So I want to say there is never a person that you can't learn from. So Gene has taught me a lot of stuff. And so one of the things he taught me years ago, um, and it took me a long time to, to start under, really understanding that is that he said, and he, what he was just talking about attracting something. So what he told me is, you know, when you're angry, you attract more anger, you know, so you attract more things to make you angry. So you might be mad because you can't find your shoe, for an example. And then, so you're so mad about that, then your mind is all over the place and you other stuff just start coming. And before you know it, you are super mad. <laughs> and it started off because you couldn't find your shoe. So now you got all these things piled on, which you've attracted, you've magnetized to yourself. And so now that's what you're getting. So start being joyful, you know, when you're joyful and watch the thing, watch more things come to make you happy to make you joyful, to make you excited, you know? Right. So watch, start watching. That's something y'all can, you know, <laughs> we can leave with y'all is, is to start watching the things that you attract. Why am I attracting this? What am I doing? What am I saying? What is my to attention myself? on? Say that again. What is my attention on? Yes. So whatever your attention is on, that's what you're going to draw. To and you, if you, to so the, the saying is when where attention energy flows where attention goes. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to make sure I said it right? <laughs> that's it. So um, I want to give you some words of encouragement. Life challenges will come. They are a part of life. I encourage you to seek to become an undefeated champion over every challenge, <laughs> every challenge in your life. We're rooting for you, Tiger. We are rooting for you. You can do it. <laughs> Stay strong. One day you will be able to look back and say, I made it. And you will wonder how in the heck did I get here? But first you wonder how in the heck did I get in this deep hole that I'm in, in this place that I don't want to be in. So you have to find ways to encourage yourself, just to remind you to encourage yourself, uh, words of affirmation, whatever it is, everybody has their own thing that they can draw from and that will help them and inspire them and encourage them. So whatever that thing is, it can be walking in the park, like Jean talked about walking, you know, and looking at nature and viewing nature, you know, it can be music, it can be whatever your it is, that's the thing that you want to put your attention on, your focus on so that you can uh, come to a better place in your mind. I also want to comment um, about uh, Jean and Stephanie, I just learned in the past year, despite reading, studying, love, 
loving the others, doing everything I could do to be all that I felt I should be. Just this year, I finally learned how so very important practicing self-love is and not self-bullying. There you go, I, Flannery. Yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> Which I think I did or have done to myself for my entire life. Self-reinforcing, silical self-sabotage. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Flannery, for being a part of this show and for your comments. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate everybody that has been a part of the show and that have made comments. We missed a lot of comments, but we will go back um, and comment on the comments. So just know that we're not ignoring you. Things were happening so fast and going so fast. And we try to uh, get everybody and everything in there um, to share with you. Uh, we just want to give you hope and we just want to provide hope. Uh, because we felt hopeless at one time, which uh, this black that I wear is because we were in a dark place. Uh, this red is now because we are powerful and the knowledge that we have gained. <laughs> we, and we didn't even coordinate that. <laughs> we did not. <laughs> so, um Gene, do you have any other comments or does anybody else have anything they want to ask or anything they want to add? Yeah, I just want to, again, uh, reinforce what you said about staying encouraged. Uh, find something to do to focus your energy on creating that which you desire and not trying to avoid that which you don't. Because, again, when you focus on that which you don't want or even avoiding it, you're giving it attention and you're, you're creating more gravitational pull towards it. So focus more of your attention on that, what you desire. This is something I tell myself. Mm -hmm. You already know why, but it's something I have to tell myself. So focus on that, what you desire, as opposed to that, what you do not. And you'll right. get more of what you want as opposed to the opposite. So stay encouraged, right. stay strong, stay focused. Peace and love. So we want to say, Thanks for joining us. Join us next week at the same time. If you'd like to be a guest on the show to share how love has been misunderstood in your life or to share your bullying experience um, and how you overcame it, please send me a message um, in Messenger or send me an email to reallovemisunderstood at gmail.com. Flannery. Wow, I love that black red. You have created a community for me today so that I did not expect, that I so did not expect. And you have done so much for me today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. This is our show. Uh, yes, uh, Sharon says, yes, you are very powerful. Love the meaning of the colors. You are both amazing. And thank you for bringing awareness and education. Continued success to higher heights. So <laughs> So. Like a boy. Uh, say that again. I said fly like a boy. <laughs> <laughs> we love to be silly and have fun. So we love to have you on the show. We speak joy, love, and peace over your life. Bye for now. See you later. That's the end of our show.